Welcome to Heart to Heart Nurses, brought to you by the Preventive Cardiovascular Nurses Association. PCNA's mission is to promote nurses as leaders in cardiovascular disease prevention and management. We are so excited to be able to spend time today with Sandy Dunbar. Sandy, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Okay, um, I'm Sandy Dunbar, and I am um, currently a, a Candler Professor at the Emory School of Nursing in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, at Emory University, and I'm very excited to be here today. I've been in nursing um, for quite a while, <laughs> and i um, I've seen many changes, and some of them have been very positive. It's very exciting to think about where we are as we chart our path for the future of nursing. So, Sandy, you have an abundance of experience in cardiovascular nursing, and you have seen a lot of changes over time. And as we've discussed offline, there are a lot of ways that nurses can find out information about leadership. It might be through books or podcasts like this or people at their workplace. Where would you point a cardiovascular nurse, perhaps one who's new to their career, where would you point them in terms of great resources for leadership information? Yeah, that's a great uh, question because I think there are a number of, um, you know, books and things that people can read. Um, Certainly, there are there are numerous seminars and uh, leadership workshops that people can attend. Frequently, um, institutions may have a leadership mentorship program and a leadership ladder within their um, own organization. And I, I can I know in um, our organization at Emory University we have. Um, things that faculty can go to for leadership development. We have um, in the clinical setting, um, there's a whole leadership ladder and leadership development uh, that goes from, you know, the new leader to the emerging leader to um, the experienced leader. <laughs> and I think leadership is something that you never stop uh, developing. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. It's uh, constantly evolving in a person um, based on the context, the situation, the individuals that they're working with, and um, clearly the mission of what they're trying to accomplish. You know, so if you're, I think about professional organizations in nursing have a lot um, to offer too in terms of leadership. And PCNA is developing um, some great resources for its members um, and, uh, and allies. So those are some, some resources. So one of the things that you just described was a mentor program. And I wonder if you have any experiences that you would like to share that in terms of being a mentor or needing a mentor and looking to find one in your career and how that process was for you. So mentorship, I think, is really key to um, the retention of, of nurses in the healthcare system and also the development um, of their own of their career, and people can rarely do this on their own. Um, it's it's great to have someone to help point the way. You know, I, I like to use the analogy of, you know, somebody who's going to climb um, Machu Picchu, or maybe they're going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro or something. They never go without a guide. There's always a guide who helps uh, point the way or helps point out barriers and possible solutions to overcome, who helps them prepare uh, and have a plan. And so some of the key things that I think um, have been successful in mentorship is helping people plot out a plan of what, you know, establish what are their goals, what are their long-range goals and vision for themselves, and what are their short-range goals, short-range meaning, you know, within the next year or so. And then how are they going to get there? You know, what are the steps that they need to take? And sometimes getting really detailed with that development plan. And um, it's not something that you really think about doing much for yourself unless someone guides you and helps you uh, develop that kind of plan. And, and I think uh, a mentor is someone who can help keep you accountable, right? So... If you've set out a plan and you're meeting with your mentor regularly, 
Um, it's a time to review your progress. Um, it's not a time to um, to really wallow in in a fact that something wasn't accomplished, but to also think about why and what what can be done. So those are just uh, some of the things I think that are important is um, uh, being in a mentor-mentee relationship, being able to give and receive feedback, and for mentors and mentees to figure out how they're going to work together. Are they going to work together by meeting frequently? Um, Are they going to perhaps work side-by-side on something uh, where someone might you know, provide additional expertise. And um, the other thing that's really key is to think about the difference between mentorship and sponsorship. And so, you know, mentors tend to help um, guide someone, and sponsors, I think, open the door. You know, they're the ones who help you get nominated for something or help someone else see your potential. And Sometimes it's not the same person. Sometimes the mentor can be the day-to-day or the, you know, not day-to-day, but the guide and the sponsor is the one who actually um, can connect you with an influential person or something like that. So mentoring is, I think, a key part of leadership and um, really helping to inspire um, inspire the thinking of others and, and to guide others and... Um, it's really an important piece that nursing needs to develop more of. So as we're talking about developing nurses, I believe you have an opportunity in your role to work with individuals who are just starting on their career. Did I get that right? That's right. So I know that you've seen some changes in the nursing profession in your career, and even in the last two to five years, particularly the last two, of course, we've had uh, the COVID pandemic impacting what we do in terms of nurse training and things like that. I'm sure that there are some barriers that you could describe, but what are the opportunities that you see for nurses that are entering the career now that may be the same as what happened when you entered your career or might be markedly different? Mm -hmm. So I think nurses have a lot of opportunity um, that, that's much more diverse today. I mean, at one time there were, there were limited sort of career paths for nurses, but now I see so many other opportunities, and there's opportunities for nurses to be engaged in patient care, advanced care, prevention, um, to be engaged in leadership and management, and also not just management and leadership within nursing, but um, stepping out and being in other aspects of, um, of the provision of health care as uh, leaders, um, owning their own businesses. Um, we've seen exciting things that nurses do for, um, the, for setting up wellness programs or, you know, even um, inventing things and developing their own companies um, that provide a type of device or a type of innovation um, that's that's something that I don't think we thought about years you know 30 years ago or whatever you know you might see well there's a real need for someone to develop this but uh, nurses were not really encouraged to be inventors or makers of of new uh, things and now now we see some of that um, in addition I think there's opportunities with technology uh, to improve access to care through things like telehealth uh, and other ways that um, that help nurses that help help people have access to nurses um, from communities where there there may not be. Um, we have nurses very engaged now in things like telemonitoring and um, remote monitoring of uh, physiological and mental health uh, physiological. Uh, parameters as well as mental health and uh, providing care based on that type of assessment. Um, so those are just some of the ways that, um, and I, I think nurses can be, you know, in clinical and academic settings, in industry, um, and, and a whole and a variety of things. There's also global health opportunities, and uh, the world is just at their feet. So <laughs> we are talking with Sandy Dunbar about nursing leadership and the future of nursing. We'll be right back. 
For more education resources and tools for your clinical practice, visit PCNA.net. You'll find CE courses, patient handouts, and more, all free to access. Visit PCNA.net. And we're back talking with Sandy Dunbar about nursing leadership and the future of nursing. We've had some discussions with some other professionals in this podcast series talking about global issues and how nursing across the globe is not the same. So a practitioner here in the United States might be a little bit different in terms of their scope of work than somebody elsewhere in the, in the country or elsewhere on the globe. And that PCNA is looking to provide information and educational resources to help level the playing field, I guess I would say, and provide opportunities for those global nurses. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk a little bit about PCNA's role in the global sphere? Well, I think PCNA has a huge opportunity um, to not only contribute to sharing of resources and information, but to also um, learn from other um, institutions, other global leaders, and how things are done differently in different healthcare models, looking at ways to um, I- improve upon a w- what we're trying to accomplish through not only sharing of information, but sharing of ways to lead and, um, and engage their, their members um, from these international organizations. Um, I think that PCNA has provided uh, the opportunity through the Global Nursing Leadership Forum to um, you know, share information and share opportunities like that. So as we look ahead to what might be next for nursing, I know that you have an interest in a report called The Future of Nursing. Could you just tell us about that? Okay. So the Future of Nursing um, report is a, um, a document that was created by the National Academy of Medicine um, and a, a panel of experts in nursing and health care. And they looked at the health and well-being of the nation and the role of nurses and how nursing could contribute um, in much more depth across um, a variety of settings and a variety of actions through increasing nursing's capacity, increasing nursing's expertise, and increasing nursing's engagement in healthcare. And some of the um, exciting things that came out of that report, which is really to address the years of 2020 to 2030, um, include s- several priorities to help strengthen um, nursing overall, such that it could be a more um, a stronger contributor to healthcare. And so, some of those things include include things like acting now to improve the health and well-being of the nation and finding uh, ways to engage nurses in things like improving care coordination. We know that health care can be quite disjointed. And, um, and we also can see that if, if we think about this from PCNA's perspective, to just really focus in on PCNA's mission and how can we um, tailor some of our strategic priorities to this report. So if we're talking about care coordination, how can we improve um, preventive care and coordination of preventive care? And what are the strategies that PCNA can uh, engage in to facilitate capacity in that way? One thing that we've talked about is expanding the um, the uh, distribution of the um, cardiovascular certificate program, which is part of the goal of increasing expertise, uh, which fits well with this program. Um, There's some other strategies, for example, lifting barriers to, um, to the contribution of nursing. One thing, for example, is that we know that 27 states do not have um, full practice authority for their advanced practice nurses. And thus, there's a real need for advocacy to, um, to change laws such that nurses can practice at the top of their preparation and the top of, of their um, license and finding ways to reduce those, those barriers. Um, that would 
that would improve access uh, to nursing as well as some of the things we mentioned before in expanding telehealth and um, retaining the increased scope of practices that were that were um, levied during the pandemic that proved to be very beneficial to patients. We know that we need to design better payment models um, for cardiovascular nurses and for cardiovascular care. And all of these are efforts to um, improve health equity as well as um, that's the overall goal for strengthening nursing such that we can play a better role in advancing health equity. Uh, if we think about the priority of strengthening nursing education, we know that we need to increase the diversity of nursing in general and definitely of cardiovascular nursing so that our nurses reflect um, more of the types of populations that they serve. Um, strengthening nursing education uh, and increasing the diversity of the pipeline of nurses is key for this as well as um, you know, PCNA has talked about taking the certificate program into uh, nursing education programs as well. Another priority is valuing community and public health nursing, and uh, this is key as we think about prevention and addressing broader populations, and this would be um, important for PCNA. We've looked at the idea of developing partnerships with such groups as the American Public Health Nurses Association and uh, school nurses and thinking of ways that we might uh, provide resources for prevention for those groups. Um, fostering nurses' roles as leaders and advocates is another key priority. Um, again, working to increase our members' um, opportunities for leadership development as well as increasing the diversity of, of PCNA's um, membership and engagement and leadership. And certainly preparing nurses to respond to disasters is key for cardiovascular care as well. And um, there's many creative strategies that we can identify to improve nurses' ability to prepare for pandemics uh, and other disasters as well as to prepare our cardiovascular patients. And then finally, supporting the health and well-being of nurses um, is really key at this time and looking at ways to um, improve the, both the physical and mental health of nurses um, through, through a variety of individual um, and institutional strategies. So those are some of the things that I think are a high priority at this time. So it sounds like the future of nursing is very bright and it's very varied in terms of what people might be doing in their jobs to both today and well into the future. I've been talking with Sandy Dunbar and we are so grateful to her for sharing her time with us. I'm Geraldine Warfield, your host, and we will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Heart to Heart Nurses. We invite you to visit pcna.net for clinical resources continuing education, and much more.